Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a game playlist on the latest version of RetroArch on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So just to give an example of what we're creating, you can see on screen right now, I have an example for my SNES. It basically concatenates all of your games from a certain location on your internal RetroArch or an external drive and puts them all in one location. We can attach a couple of settings to this. It even automatically adds an icon next to it, which I think is really nice. And I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do it. What we need to do is come to our menu here on the left. We're going to be coming here to the import content option. And what we're going to be doing is selecting the last option here called manual scan. If we click A on this, we will get a lot of different settings and options here that we're going to be walking through. The first thing here we're going to be setting up is the content directory. What we need to do is click A here and we simply need to locate to whatever folder you want to search for and find all of your games inside. So for me, I'm going to be locating to my external drive that's currently connected. For you, most likely your external drive will be on your E drive right here. And then you simply need to locate to where your games are. So for me, I'm going to be locating to my PlayStation 1 folder and I currently have two games inside here. Once you've located to the folder where all of your games will be, what we're going to be doing is simply selecting scan this directory. Now I'd recommend scanning the topmost directory where all of your games will be inside so we can automatically concatenate everything here. So I have my PlayStation 1 folder here where I will only be putting PlayStation 1 games inside. So what I'm going to do is simply selecting scan this directory and now we have selected that directory. From this point we're going to be coming down to the next option system name and here we're going to be selecting the system. So in this case I'm just going to be scrolling down here until I see Sony PlayStation. As you can see it right here we can select it and now our Sony PlayStation has been added. Now, if you would like to give this a custom name, you can also do that here. In this case, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be naming it PlayStation 1. So this is just going to overwrite the display name on RetroArch. For me, I like when it says PlayStation 1 rather than just PlayStation because I specifically refer to it as PS1 or PlayStation 1. The next thing we're going to be selecting is our default core. We simply click A here and we select any core we want. So since we're using the PlayStation core, I'm going to be using the same one I did in my video previously, which is going to be BLPSXHW. Simply come here, select your core and that will automatically be attached. The next thing we can do is set up specifically what type of file extensions you want to do. For today's video, I'm going to be leaving this blank. We don't need to do anything specifically here. It's just going to automatically find our games. From this point, we can set up scan recursively. So it's basically going to search all subdirectories inside here as well. By default, this is on and I would recommend leaving this on as well. We can set up to scan inside archives. So this will really depend on the games you're trying to play. Some games can play easily and no problem from a .zip, .7zip file, etc. For PlayStation 1, I'm not a fan of this, so I'm going to be leaving this off. For smaller games like Game Boy, NES, this isn't too much of a problem. For me, I'm not a huge fan of this, so I'm going to be leaving this off. You can search for arcade dat files. Again, this isn't relevant to my video. This isn't relevant to me at the moment, but if you're searching for MAME files and stuff like this, this can be very interesting. You can set up an arcade dat filter. Again, this is a very specific setting for arcade files. So again, I'm going to be leaving this off. And then the last thing you can do is overwrite existing playlists, which will just remove any existing playlist before adding this. By default, this is off and unless you want to remove everything else I would leave this off as well so I would recommend leaving this off for the most part. Once you're happy with all of your settings above I'm simply going to be clicking start scan. This can take a couple seconds to a couple minutes depending on how many games you have and how many gigabytes of content you have so you may just have to be a little bit patient here. Once you're done, we can simply click B to back out of here. And now when we come here, we can see PlayStation has been added. Now when I try to load up, for example, Jackie Chan, I simply come in here, click run. My game will be automatically loaded up and it will run really easily from this point. And it makes the RetroArch experience a lot better in my opinion. And it's definitely something I'd recommend doing from your consoles. If you're going to be doing with a lot of consoles, or you're going to be playing a lot of different games. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to create a game playlist on the newest version of RetroArch on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.